first song will be 829. 829. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver is a man of war, and the Lord is his name. Please stand for the prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful Sunday we have here. Father, please be with uh, the sick and the ill. Father, please get them better. Father, please be with the soldiers that are giving their lives every day. Father, please be with them and their families, and Father, please keep them safe. Father, please be with us as we go through this worship, Father. And Father, we're thankful for all the blessings that we have. In Christ's name, amen. My, uh, the invitation song will be 714, 714. The song I'll be singing now is 883. Eight, Eight, three.
Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed their meal and the fellowship we just had. Uh, to get ready for my sermon, I had a, a can of the Crush Orange Soda. And I'm convinced that stuff is basically just orange gasoline. Like, if you lit it on fire, it'd probably burn green. I'm pretty sure you can't bring it into, like, airplanes and stuff. It'd probably be illegal. Um, uh, but uh, today I'm here to talk to you about pacifism. And before someone talks about an ism, it's polite to give the definition of it because uh, some people may not know it. And also, uh, for the rest of the time I'll be talking, I want it to be exactly clear what I mean when I say pacifism. Uh, the dictionary, and by that I mean Google, defines pacifism as the belief that any violence, including war, is unjustifiable under any circumstances, and that all dispute should be settled by peaceful means. So put, to put that simply, it means that uh, any sort of violence is unjustifiable. So if one wants to be just, to use justice, a Christian virtue, justice, then one cannot be violent. So the question is, is this true? Is this, uh, is this biblically accurate uh, in a, of a stance? So the first, what I'd first like to do is to differentiate between two things. Uh, what we want to be true and what is true, because they're very different things, uh, as I'm sure many of us, all of us should know. Uh, I'd like to be maybe a couple inches taller or have a couple more dollars in my pocket, but uh, what is true is that I'm as tall as I probably will ever be and have no dollars in my pocket. <laughs> and so uh, uh, the, we would want it to be true that no one should ever have to use violence, but uh, we live in a world where maybe that isn't always the truth. Uh, luckily, we have an authority. People who don't believe in God don't. They uh, often, uh, the intellectuals who don't believe in God will complain about not having an authority. There is a uh, philosophical concept called the absurd, and what that means is that uh, it's, they talk about how because they don't believe in a God, they, uh, they want to know all these things about the universe, but they're too dumb to notice it, which uh, is uh, pretty accurate, honestly. They, they really are too dumb, and that's what's absurd, is that they think uh, that they should be able to. But uh, we can turn to an authority. We have God as an authority, and he gives us all the information that we need to know uh, about the world around us. And so if we want to know if violence is appropriate, we can turn to the Bible. Earlier, we had Exodus chapter 15, verse 3 read for us. The Lord is a man of war, and the Lord is his name. So first, it establishes that the Lord is a master of war. He is in charge of that. And so it does not happen without his say or his uh, authority. And the reason for this is the second sentence is the Lord is his name. We call God the Lord. He is in charge of all things. When uh, the world was made, it was because he said so. Uh, God's word is a powerful thing. If we turn to John chapter 1, verse 1, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The uh, Greek word that we translate to mean word in that is uh, logos, or logos. It, uh, it's spelled L-O-G-O-S. And uh, the um, intellectuals of the time, the Greeks, when they used the word logos, they didn't always actually mean word, like we mean like a word. They meant in a lot of the same way we would use the word uh, programming, uh, in that it is the defined rules by which things work. And so in a spiritual sense, it's very similar to the concept of providence, that from the very beginning, God said something, and that's how it happened. Uh, so like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the other in the beginning in the Bible. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. It's his, his programming for how things should work. And so if God commands something to be true, then it is. We're given consciousness so that we can, uh, we can determine in simple situations what the right or wrong thing is. And normally that will tell us you know, we shouldn't hurt people. But if God says that, uh, that hurting someone or violence is the right way to go, then it is. Uh, because God gets to make the rules. He gave us this consciousness that helps us decide things. And so if he decides that consciousness is wrong for a certain situation, then it simply is. That's why God was able to command to Abraham that Abraham sacrifice his son. Uh, and if uh, God had not told him that, you know, he called it off, sort of, then it would have still been right for Abraham to have killed his son in that situation. It would have been justifiable. Um, uh, you may have heard for a long time that there's been this sort of a uh, trope, I guess, with uh, modern Christianity in the world. Hippie Jesus sort of thing. You know, you'll see uh, people, they like draw Jesus or whatever. That he'll have a uh, like tie-dye shirts and throwing up peace signs. And I'm here to tell you that that is heretical. Uh, is very much wrong, very much inaccurate. Because if there's one thing that Jesus has never been, it has never been tolerant, never been tolerant of evil. Uh, we're given the account of Jesus when he saw the people who were uh, changing out money for temple money in the temple, how he, uh, he saw this and got angry. And what he did was he made a whip right in front of every one of them. 
he wove a whip together and let them all see him. And then he beat them out of the temple and started throwing tables everywhere and yelling at them. Now, uh, hippie Jesus would never do that. Never. Uh, and Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, I came not to bring peace, but to bring a sword. Uh, Jesus, in his wisdom, knew that as long as there were people that would cling to good, there would be people who hated good, who clung to evil. And as long as one clung to good, one clung to evil, there would be violence. There would be uh, the people who wanted to stop good from existing, uh, people who were jealous of the good. Uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 36, uh, and he that hath no sword, let him buy one. Jesus told his apostles that if you don't have a sword, go out and buy one. Another situation with the limited commission uh, Jesus told his apostles when he was just wanting to go out and go out and uh, give some early preaching in, this was before he had died, he told them to uh, uh, sell their cloaks if they need to and buy a sword. And the reason for this was is because back then, if you did not have a sword on you and you went traveling, you would be probably killed or uh, robbed or well, probably both. Uh, people would wait on the roads for people who came by uh, undefended, and they would rob them and kill them and wouldn't think twice about it. And so you had to carry a sword on you. Now, would Jesus tell these people to carry swords if he did not intend for them to use them if the need be? Of course not. Now, I don't want you to think that I am uh, saying that violence is the answer in, in every situation. Of course it isn't. I can't open a jar of pickles by slamming it on the ground just because that seemed like the way to open it. Uh, you know, there, Violence is rarely the answer, but there are points at which violence has to be matched with violence. Uh, personal kinds of pacifism uh, between uh, like person to person is often the way to go if you can. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 and 39. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say, resist not evil. Whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Uh, so it seems as if in, if you can avoid violence, definitely try to. Uh, it's best to try not to get into violence because no one's going to see a violent person and think they are, uh, they are being godly. Um, but the we get to the idea of who do we belong to, because if violence against ourselves is an offense, who is it an offense to? Because if God created us, then do we not belong to God? And is the offense not really to us, but to God? And so it is God's right to judge that situation more than it is ours. Now, we have the right to defend God's property if it comes in actual danger, but in the situation of this, uh, this uh, little passage, then it seems it's more um, if in a situation where you're not actually in danger, like someone just slapping you is not going to kill you. You know, it's uh, not even going to really damage God's property. And so if you can ignore it, choose to. Uh, it'll set an example for other people. Uh, some will go to, uh, to say against uh, biblical violence or violence by Bible standards. So they'll go to Matthew chapter 26, uh, verse 53. All they that take the sword shall perish by it. Uh, the context for this is that uh, when Jesus was being arrested by the Roman soldiers, uh, Peter drew a sword and attacked, assaulted one of the soldiers. And... Uh, uh, Jesus told him to put his sword away. He put the uh, ear that Peter had cut off back on the soldier and told him that all who take up the sword shall die by it. <coughs> this is good advice because uh, violence will often be met with violence, especially by people who aren't trying to stay out of violence. Most people have heard that it isn't an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That's how most people have been living and still live to this day. And so if you take a sword against someone, you can expect to have one put right back to you. Um, and so what, Peter, what he was telling Peter was that you up against all these Roman soldiers, trained soldiers, you're not going to last. So know that once you've drawn that sword, you put yourself in danger. Uh, you know, get, know what you're getting into. Um, but I want to uh, – well, I'm already concluding. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'd like to conclude by uh, giving a sort of hope, I guess. Uh, we live in a time where violence – is all around us. It is uh, violence and hatred have come to our shore, and, and for many of us, they have come to our doors, and it is scary. Um, but Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Because people do, like I said earlier, people want it to be true that pacifism is the way to go. They want it to be true that peace is always an option. <coughs> but secretly, they all know that it isn't always the op the, 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 there's, isn't always an option for pacifism. They, they secretly know it. And so if you can show someone a situation where violence seemed to be the answer and you did not use it, they will, they will see God in you. And that is a blessing if there has ever been one. I'd like to read for you Mac, Micah chapter 4 verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains 
and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. So uh, <clears throat> the church will be established, and people will come to it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the word will spread out from because of the church. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither, the, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit, every man, under his own vine, and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk, every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. So in the future, there will be peace. There will be a world where we don't have to be afraid of anything. Unfortunately, if you are not following God's will the way that God has planned for you, then that fear is still there for you. <clears throat> so if you would like to not live a life of fear, you can leave these doors and you can walk through the doors of death without any fear, but you have to make peace with Jesus, with God. Uh, with his sacrifice that has been made for you. So if you have not been baptized, if you have not followed God's plan, then you can do it now. You can come up here and we will handle the situation for you. <clears throat> if you have, then you surely remember that when you first accepted the gospel, you remember the peace. You remember the fearlessness. And you can have that again. If you have a need, please come as we stand and sing.